we have a lot to learn from animals on how to transform as humans. I first discovered that we could learn from animals about 10 years ago in a dream in an old mansion in the forest. It had long wooden passageways, candlelit by torches, and it was covered in cobwebs. A man in a wheelchair holding a shotgun was chasing me around the mansion until he cornered me in a room, and I looked out the window as if to jump to my escape when suddenly I was outside the mansion, half a football field away and a golden, glowing wolf was moving quickly in my direction. Terrified, I stood in my place paralyzed. A German shepherd, the guard dog, the protector, walked in the path of the wolf, which then ran past me. When I analyzed this dream, I knew that it meant the old house represented my past, and the man in the wheelchair was the crippling aspects of it that were holding me back. The German shepherd was there to reassure me that I should not be as scared of the wolf, which represented my future. Although a wolf is rarely known to attack human beings, we often depict them as an animal that we should be afraid of. But what we have to learn from the wolf is that the wolf knows no fear, because it trusts all of its companions, the members of its pack. Wolves do everything together in their pack, hunt, forage, raise their young, everything, together. And when a wolf howls to the moon, it is howling for all of its companions to gather. We as humans also have calls to gather. And when the wolf calls to the moon, it is also shouting for freedom, because the wolf is a symbol of ultimate freedom in nature. We too are also shouting for freedom. So I was very disappointed and saddened when I read that this year the United States Congress took the American gray wolf off of the endangered species list, because it meant that the way that we treat the wolf as a symbol of freedom in nature is the way that we are treating the environment in its entirety. In order to find out what animals we have connections to, Usually, you just have to ask somebody, what animal are you connected to? And I've asked this question many times, and almost always, somebody will say one or two animals, each of which has a special lesson for them. We have constructed edifices of stone and steel, forming cities that have separated us from nature. But for thousands of years, we lived alongside animals and we have not forgotten those connections. The bat uses sonar to navigate its awkward flight, teaching us that we should trust our instincts. The goat that has pinching hooves that it uses to climb trees and mountains shows us that we should always be reaching higher. And the rabbit, the rabbit tells us that sometimes we just have to jump, even if we end up down a dark hole like Alice in Wonderland. The second time I learned from animals was about two years ago. I was in a park with two of my friends in what we would consider a tribal council, and I was explaining that when we change, there are parts of us that are left behind. But when we shed everything in our past and become entirely new creatures, that is transformation. And when I said the word transformation, a butterfly fluttered around us, and I noted it to my friends that it's very interesting that a butterfly should appear because the butterfly is the symbol of transformation. And when I said that word transformation, another butterfly flew around us. So I told this story to a friend of mine who was leaving Cairo to go to Beirut, and I said that when she returned, she would see a butterfly. And she laughed skeptically, but I said, you'll see. And when she got back, she was in the park with her family, and her little cousin walked up to her with his hands out and said, look at what I found. And it was a butterfly. So I told that story to a friend who was also leaving Cairo, but for Switzerland, and I said, the point of this story is that transformation is possible. It can really happen. And to prove it to you, when you get back to Geneva, you're going to see a butterfly. When she got back, she was sitting having breakfast with her family when a butterfly flew in and landed on the table. 
believing that, yeah, you know, maybe I do have a connection with butterflies, <laughs> I told my yoga teacher that he was going to see a butterfly. But I didn't tell him the whole background story. I just said, you're going to see a butterfly. And I talked to him a couple months later and said, hey, did, did you see it? And he said, I was riding a motorcycle in India when a butterfly landed on my face. I'm not here to convince you to believe as I do that there's no such thing as coincidence because butterflies are everywhere. But so too are the signs, the signs of transformation that we have to transform and that we are transforming. But I'd be a liar if I said there wasn't some sort of doubt inside of me that maybe some of us will transform, but not all of us, and certainly not the deeply entrenched systems of society that we've created. But then, on January 28th, I marched with Egyptians to Tahrir Square. It took more than six hours, and on what any normal day would have taken half an hour. But on this extraordinary day, I saw many extraordinary things. <laughs> In all of the freedom movements that are occurring in the so-called Arab Awakening or Arab Spring, there is one single chant that you can hear in every single country. Ishab, Yurid, Eskat, the Nizam. The people want the downfall of the system. And in each country, you might have your own versions of that. In Lebanon, Eskat, the Taife, <laughs> the end of the sectarianism. In Palestine, Eskat, the... Uh, <laughs> Eskat al-Ahtilal, end of the occupation in Palestine. But it's coming not from leaders or politicians. It's coming from us, the people. And we want the destruction, the end of the entire broken system. Not reforms, not promises. We have constructed societies that are based upon ecological and economic models that depend upon exponential and unending growth and consumption. And in this unsustainable model, we have put decision-making in the hands of phony politicians and corrupt corporations. We worship celebrities. We don't know ourselves or anybody around us, yet we cause innumerable suffering upon both. And worst of all, we are destroying the very ecological system that supports all life on Earth. What we need is a revolution, if that's what you want to call it. I call it a transformation. And, and I look to the universal symbol of it for guidance, the butterfly. The butterfly transforms largely in three stages. The first stage, as a caterpillar, or larva, is an expression of limitations and dependency. It is confined by gravity. The butterfly moves slowly and deliberately. And each butterfly larva is dependent upon a single plant for food, and it will consume all of the leaves without regard for any of the creatures that will depend upon that plant for food as well. When it's finished, it crawls out onto a leaf or a stem and literally hangs there, suspending itself, wrapped in a shell known as the chrysalis. Now, that larva could think, what would happen if there's a rainstorm and it knocks me off the stem? What if a predator comes and eats me. What if 
a terrorist comes and bombs the garden. What would I do then? But we know it doesn't do that. When the butterfly emerges, it is one of the most beautiful creatures on all of earth. We often think about the butterfly in terms of its big, colorful wings. But the butterfly is a symbol of dance, not because of its wings, but because of its legs. Because upon the legs of a butterfly are thousands and thousands of sensors that interact with whatever object it touches, literally like thousands of feet upon a dance floor. If you've ever been out dancing and you're not a very good dancer like me, you've probably looked enviously on the dance floor and seen people who are dancing but they're not really good at it. Yet they really seem to be enjoying themselves. And all they had to do was get over their fear of going onto the dance floor. And if you are a good dancer, then you know that there's a difference between thinking about dancing and actually doing it. So, as all the things that are happening in this world today, there will be bloodshed. But we can remember to dance. Because dancing reminds us of the lightness of life, the sweetness of life, which is why we so often dance in celebration. I'm not here today to tell you that I have transformed or that the world has transformed because as you are sitting there, right now, blood is being spilt in Bahrain and Yemen and Syria and Palestine and Libya and in all the cities, in all the countries, in all of the world. And the single defining moment that began the transformation was when people stopped living in fear and started living for freedom. So I'm walking out onto that leaf like the butterfly, and I'm suspending my fears, and I'm calling you to join us to transform together. Thank you.